Everybody, we're back on Inspired by and why. I love the quirk. I think it's balanced pretty well and it's still believable. I heard some people talking about Elspeth starting as a side character around The Good Wife and also being brought back to The Good Fight, a spinoff from The Good Wife. And I thought that it was interesting for people to say how much she operated so well as a side character and is this too much of her mm -hmm. particular quirk for a main character? I'm gonna throw that out to you and see what you think and then I'll give my thoughts. What do you think? I do not think so. I do not think it's too much. Um, I think it's just enough to make it interesting. Um, lots of police procedurals out there. Um, and yeah, It can be flat. Some of them can be. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, just overly violent or overly this or overly that. Um, and yeah, so it's, this is, you know, it, it, I guess they all have to be overly something. And this is overly quirky, you know, not overly, but you know. It leans on the it quirk le it leans on the in a way right. that both of us like. That's right. what I think too. Right. I right. think this has a tone that fits me better. Right. We were talking about some of the balance of the intensity with the opening scene being the murder, then they have this music that makes it feel a little bit more stylized mm. and less violent and gritty, even though it's an act of violence. So. They're giving us something that does lighten the intensity right, exactly. of a murder mystery show. Right, right. I'm also curious as to what you think about the following that occurred to me when I was reading online about this kind of level of quirk and the character of Elspeth. How many characters of color have we seen like this? Because we've seen an explosion mm, of quirk. Right. But me writing quirky, I guess people will call them quirky. I, I don't think I think about them like that when I'm writing them, but me writing quirky characters of color as my lead, that's, interesting. I, that's something that I'm exploring. Mm. <clears throat> People are telling me that's what they are as I, far I as think quirk. It brings to mind Urkel. Yeah, that's, but that's about the only <clears throat> to me, that fit the nerd narrowly. Yeah, yeah. And we've got Elspeth, and she's a bit of a different combination. Yeah, you wouldn't yeah, just label yeah, yeah. her more of a two-dimensional or one-dimensional nerd. Right, right. She's a little bit more three-dimensional. Right. The right. reason I'm saying that, it's not that you haven't had some arcs for Steve Urkel over all the years of Family right. Matters, right. but I'm glad you mentioned him because he was an atypical representation of a black male character. Right, right. And so that's sort of what I'm thinking about when I'm saying quirk is right. what's the latest breathing space that right. we're all operating in that we get to explore more in terms of character is, types lately. Yeah, and I think yeah. the quirky characters what's are you? getting a rebirth. Yeah, but once you bring it up, it makes me think it is probably a little bit of privilege in society to be quirky as opposed to like fitting a square, role. Fitting in the mold. Yeah, yeah, we need to have diverse casting in this, and so we're going to make sure we have the person who can fit that. And our concept as right. writers might be, we want her to be this. Right. Wait, wait, hold, let's expand the concept. So if you right. have a black writer, you have a writer who feels comfortable having all kinds of characters of color do just all kinds of things. Right. It doesn't have to be a person of color, but if you have a somebody who really commands that space of, I know I can say that this is going to be a believable character. Because sometimes I get feedback and people are telling me, well, you got all these different things about this person. Right. Like that actually fits my backstory. Right. So I know it's believable, even though I'm sort of an unusual person. Right. It's not not believable. Right. That's what you get into, I think, when you have unexpected characters. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think sometimes people are like, mm -hmm. well, it's too unexpected if we whatever, as opposed to they just don't admit that maybe their imagination just didn't let them go ahead and say, sure, sure, it can be. So I, if I don't yeah. have familiarity with this community, mm -hmm. I think, well, maybe it's not believable because my subconscious says this community mm -hmm. is more monolith than what I think. It also makes me think of um, a lot of uh, British dramas yeah. um, where one of the characters is gay. Yeah. And they're, they're always like of the aristocracy or something like that. Oh, you know, because cause you so, think a working class gay man oh, no, no, wouldn't no, be yeah. allowed to be out and proud. Right, right. That's the, this is the usually, limited belief usually, of one of the writers. You know, in the past. In the, in the past. Turn of the century or whatever. I thought you were you know. going to say now. No, not now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I, I thought you were going to say period. now. Now it's super. I'm loving the Brits for giving yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. But the, 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 period, the period pieces, you know. Uh, the gay person is, you know, aristocracy or something because they're allowed to be gay. Allowed to be. The privilege to be. Right, right. Different. Different. Right, right. Part of it is you do something sort of interesting and that's how you get booked. Right. And so you need to feel good about explaining, no, this is good stuff. This is, and be able to push back against maybe critiques about it. So if anybody out there has some 
place where everybody's buzzing about quirky characters of color, let me know. Because <laughs> I need to find that tribe of mine as a screenwriter and maybe as an actor too. Yeah. So I could feel like, oh no, I don't have to dial that back. There's an audience for it. There are people buzzing about it. Or sometimes you might have to dial it back because, hey, it's already been done in this kind of way. You want to distinguish yourself from maybe being a copycat, not a copycat, but somebody who covers a space that's been covered well. Right. I just didn't know that. So let me know. Right. Let us know. Yeah. First of all, the Gina Gershon of it all. So she <laughs> is giving these great reactions. She's using her boobs to distract people because she's the murderer. Of course, the main special guest is going to be the one right. that's right. the the murderer. Right, so right. we get to dig in. I was loving seeing her ooze her sex appeal and her, you know, edge. That's just some classic Gina Gershon. Yeah. I'm a fan of hers. When she brings herself into something, she brings something that fits a character. It doesn't just give the same thing all the time, but she brings her little special sauce. You said, Ugh, when I said the Gina Gershon of it all. Go ahead. What'd you think? Yeah, no, she's good. But, um, she's good. She's good. Ah. <laughs> That's who I'm uh, most drawn to because um, yeah. she's her character. Is so like you can just tell that she's not going to do the right stuff, and Elspeth is going to save the day. And so so I just want to see. I just, oh yeah. I just want to see how how she fails, and yeah. you know she's so arrogant. I'm just watching Elspeth and all of her little quirky things like her she has these like little movements she's just like yeah totally yeah. Uh, she gets too close yeah 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 moves a little quickly yeah yeah, yeah. Just, uh, and it's fun it's it's not like that weird but it's just it's just different so the other thing i wanted to bring up was the bonding between the Elspeth character and the Officer Kaya character. Mm -hmm. So I loved this as a thing that you're going to see arc across the season. And it's being challenged because we know both of them had secret things that they were doing that related to how they're interacting in the workplace. And they weren't fully telling each other. In the last episode, they came clean with each other. So I thought that was a good, interesting opening up of different possibilities for their relationship. And that's a good thing if you're going to have a series like this go the distance is to have some of the main characters evolve and deepen their relationship. That's one of the things I loved about Elementary and other police procedural. <laughs> The scene where Captain is talking to Officer Kaya saying, right. what are you knowing? What's going on? Right. And he's saying, look, we have to be, you know, looking out for each other a little bit because there are not a lot of people of color in these positions of power. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal in our society today. When he says that, it calls forth the, this is not just a person of ambition trying to make his way. He's calling out something that's truly profoundly important not to just say, oh yeah, give some opportunity to some police of color, some black police, and they'll just figure it out. It's like, okay, you have these institutions that haven't been morphed over to serve the African American mm -hmm. as well as white, as well as native, as well as Asian American, as what well, all the communities. Right, right. And so to bring them over, the people who are catching it are the ones inside, as well as people being policed outside to change mm -hmm. these institutions. Mm -hmm. People are having to push, they're getting pushed back against. Mm -hmm. And what I can relate to is, folks inside the system talking openly about, look, we've got to navigate this. Let's help each other navigate it. It's not to say we're going to um, look the other way on corruption, mm -hmm. which is what they talked about later in the Elsbeth episode, right. Elsbeth and Officer Kaya. But it is that, as the captain was saying, you need to make sure that we don't let some things that maybe look some kind of way people aren't used to bring something important down. Right. So I thought that was a really good point. And I wanted to bring it up here. I don't know if you want to weigh in on that, but it was something I could really relate to. And I did mention it when we first talked about it. Yeah, I as when I saw it, I I thought of you. You, you told yeah. me a, a story. A particular, yeah, a particular story. It came to mind. I don't want to mention the colleague of mine. Who yeah, yeah, and I chopped, yeah. We chopped it up, but right. it was a chop it up. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So it. Uh, um, it was it made, real. It made me, made me think of that story that you told me. Yeah. Um, and, a, it was a real moment on that show. Elspeth, yeah, it was yeah. really bringing up stuff yeah. that happens. And I'm, I'm sure it 
you know, it's not uncommon. Yeah. Um, but it's also a thing where you're trying to navigate, if you're a person of color, the sense of where do your loyalties lie? And you want to make sure that you're like everybody else there. Right. You're sort of thinking about what you need as a person, as right. a worker, or right. if you're a supervisor or whatever. Yeah. And also you're trying to think about what are the larger things you don't want to support that really are bad. Mm -hmm. So that's what I think about. And that yeah. whole push and pull between, you know, what, where is your loyalty? Where do you belong? Right. That's something a lot of us have to figure out. You might be somebody who's very religious in a workplace. And maybe the actions of people, they don't fit that. And so you have to sort of try to fit your workplace right. to be professional. Right. But you still have to make sure you don't undermine some things that you think morally you really shouldn't undermine. And I'm just saying the religious thing. I'm not very religious. I'm a spiritual person. Mm -hmm. But I am someone who is interested in progressive movements being supported. And if I can't figure out how to do that, at least can't figure out how to not like make, be a problem towards those things and what I'm doing, then, then I have to stop for a moment and sort it. So I think that whole thing of for Elizabeth and Kaya, they were talking about, you know, what of their identities, I think for Kaya in the back of her mind is which identity and which person am I loyal to? Am I loyal to this woman here who we're working these cases on the ground and I really respect her and I like the way she's trying to get down to the truth. And then there's the captain who, as people of color in this uh, place in this workplace, we know whatever we've been pushing back against, and he's looked out for me in a professional way, and I've looked, you know, I have this chance to look out for him. What do I, you know, that push and pull, right, of you know, the intersectional identity and what community do you feel that you are representing? Can you not go ahead and represent both a specific individual tension point of here's this woman, here's this black man, I care for them both and professionally respect them both. Which way do I feel? And I think. I really want all of us to take that message that Elspeth was saying, which is we'll figure this stuff out. <laughs> we just need to sort of go in toward the truth for them because they're investigators. But for us all, I think, to our main mission for a lot of what we do, which is to try to support um, justice, try to support progressive, try to support uh, empowering and compassionate efforts in the world. So if we can just figure out that, <laughs> that's what we really got to be doing, y'all. She is put in this position sort of in between a lot of people, you know, the, she's not, she's not really the police, um, and she's in between different people within the police, in between the, the, the suspects in the police, and, you know, so, so she has to navigate that, and, um, she, she shows a lot of compassion for various people, um, you know, the, the victim, of course, um, and um, also people like uh, she doesn't show as much compassion for the person she, you know, thinks is the killer, the, the killer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, people around her, you know, like her spouse or her friend, you know, the, 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 vic the, the, not the, the killer's the killer, friend, the killer's spouse. Friend, you know, yeah. yeah. And anybody who's related to the killer, you know, she'll, she has compassion for them, like, oh, you have to deal with this person, you know. Um, and mm -hmm. as far as the police, you know, she has, she's trying to, she's there to try to find out about corruption, yeah. you know, especially about the captain. And uh, so, but she's not given a lot of information um, with regards to, like, what she's looking for and why. Right. And until this until, latest episode. Until this latest episode, right. right. She gets more information. And uh, so she's sort of not wanting to jump to conclusions and you right. know she wants to have compassion for the captain because she knows he could be in a really awkward situation you know where things there's a lot of gray areas to things and um so yeah so which you pointed out in the last episode yeah, he exactly, pointed that exactly, out that's exactly. right and we talked He's about like, that a oh, little bit it might look like this but it's actually this and, right because he had so, helped i guess get her son a job right, something like that right right so in the previous um, episode that we didn't see right right so she she does a good job of sort of um you know trying to trying to balance all the different angles that she's working um by using compassion um for people because she understands they're coming from a, a certain space and trying to move up the ladder or trying to you know have different goals yeah. um Exactly. So, yeah. It makes me think about what we're talking about with um, 
do you maybe grow the skill of compassion if you definitely are trying to navigate like we all have to navigate our own little particular space in the world but for some folks we are supported a lot more than for others and so maybe if you're elizabeth's character and your right. background was people kept looking at you like you're an oddball right. then you have to keep on trying to figure out how to understand how to fit and so maybe you have compassion for other people a little bit more because right you had to look at things and try to explain how <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they made sense to you and what was going on for you and that was difficult and so maybe you grew the skill exactly. of definitely having mm -hmm. a lot of ways to look at things differently right for other people right because even, you're looking at though, it differently yourself because you just happen to look at everything right, a little bit right. differently i mean even though more she's, deeply more deeply you know even though like we were saying she probably comes from a little bit of privilege i don't know her backstory no, 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 like no. that well right elspeth's backstory right. but in but order in order to be quirky us. You know in society like you know she probably had a little bit of privilege well we don't know so if people okay. can inform us because this character does have a backstory and what we've done is we've taken things that we're interested in and frankly the good wife series was not something that i really wanted to dive into myself as a viewer so we're just sort of starting to center on shows that we like so those of y'all who really love the good wife and the good fight let us know and yeah. give us some of that sense of like how did elsbeth uh evolve from what y'all knew because i think when some people were commenting about the character in the previous shows where it was born, character of Elspeth, where she was born in, <laughs> in terms of writing, yeah. uh, they were saying that there were certain things about her that were just unexpected and it was sort of very refreshing, wasn't explained deeply about mm -hmm. why was she like that. So she came in and sort of was unpredictable in a certain kind of a way that was very Elsbethian. And then they, we didn't have to get a whole lot of backstory because she was not the main person. So maybe we're going to get a chance to have people can sleuth down into the backstory across Elsbeth's episodes and the Good Wife episodes and let us know what's the origin for all this, or maybe that's still to be revealed in later mm -hmm. parts of the season because that makes a lot of sense. You, at this point, a couple of episodes into a season, you wouldn't have all these major elements if it's a procedural and not a drama that really follows character primarily. You know, if you have if it's procedural, you have to spend a lot of time on that A story. That the A top story is your who done it each episodes you guys spend a lot of time on that so i think that's a really cool thing that you're bringing up compassion something for all of us to think about in general and i think especially good if you're trying to really understand like detectives try to really understand what's right. going on right. get underneath it right. not jump to conclusions so they can make sure right. that what they're doing with their power is actually um the right thing and in the service right. of justice and even though right. she's technically not a detective she's a lawyer she's operating like a detective in this series so I appreciated the compact. Anytime we can talk about compassion, it's a good day. Yeah, yeah. So thanks, okay. you guys. Comment, like, and subscribe. If you like what we're doing, if you think we should improve it, put that in the comment. If you have some Absolutely. insights about quirky characters, quirky characters of color, yeah. let us know where to find them.